There's no need to get tense Relax with Flux Condenser. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. Okay, just using the Dremel here to uh, polish up the uh, tuning condenser. Uh, you can see the difference here. I'm working on this one section. Um, going, you know, perhaps going a little overboard with the cleaning. Uh, obviously, you know, it's non-critical that this be clean except for the contacts. Um, but um, on this radio, I'm taking my time a little bit more and just uh, really spending a lot of time on, on the aesthetics of it and polishing it, just trying to work on different techniques and see what works. So... Um, for this one, I uh, basically just started by uh, using some rubbing alcohol and um, <clears throat> the toothbrush, which works great. And you know, you can open up the um, open up the capacitor into the open mesh position or the unmesh position. And you know, with the uh, with the toothbrush, really get in there nicely and uh, clean that up. This one wasn't overly dirty in there, but I figured I would go in anyway just to make sure everything is nice and clean. Um, yeah, so I've been going over it that way with the brush, and now I'm just really trying to get that polish up on it, uh, see what we can do. And, uh, you know, I started using this, uh, this funny toothpaste here called uh, Simichrome. It, you know, it tastes horrible, but it uh, does, a, does a real nice job polishing metal. So, um, no, only kidding. This is uh, Simichrome polish, obviously designed for metal, in the toothpaste container, not actual toothpaste. Um, and I have that on the, uh, this buffing pad here, um, on the Dremel, but yeah, as I said, I was, I was doing this by hand using a, a rag and, uh, it again, dawned on me that, uh, geez, you know, this would be a good work for the, uh, good job for the Dremel. So I mentioned that in another video that the, I'm going to start trying to use the Dremel more. Um, and you can see, I wish I could show you what these look like before, but man, look at that shine. It's like a jewelry shine. These were polished, uh, with a semi-chrome and a Dremel as well. Um, these here were done more by um, uh, just using, uh, you know, wipes and alcohol. You can see the difference that the uh, the, the buffing with the Simichrome and the um, Dremel made. So I'm going to keep working on this. I should note that I did remove in here that you have two uh, variable mica condensers used for the fine tuning. And I did take the mica out of here because I didn't want to get, get, get damaged or I didn't want uh, alcohol to get on it or what have you um, uh, just in case there was a reaction there um, so those have been removed and I've got those safely tucked away back here um, also with these tuners you're going to want to find out where the bearings are and here you can see them so those will need to be looped up you want to put a little, uh, uh, a little oil or grease in there sewing machine oil works um, I usually use like a, um, a light uh, white lithium grease that goes in there. So any areas where you have movement. Um, one place you do not want to get uh, any <coughs> grease oil is this the can here where the, um, the, the string for the tuning mechanism ties to. You don't want any slippage there. That's a good, that's a good place actually to go over with a Q-tip and some uh, alcohol and really get that out. Make sure that's a good, you know, nice, clean, dry surface. Let me keep working on this and I'll uh, check back when we make some progress. Here's uh, one of two pieces of mica, mica that serve as uh, insulators in the um, variable mica section of the um, tuning capacitor condenser. And um, as I said earlier, I took it out to avoid damage. These, these are very, very delicate. Fortunately, the one in this uh, radio was in good shape. And what I'm doing here is I'm just gently brushing it off with just water uh, and a q-tip and I'll do the same to the other. Okay we've got the big variable condenser all cleaned up uh, looking pretty good nice and shiny very clean. Uh, I'm gonna put the um, mica wafers, wafers back in now. I'm gonna show you how we do that um, and again those were just clean with a little bit of water and a q-tip. So here they are if you can see them I'm going to start with the left one. They're both the same, so it doesn't matter which one I use. But very gently, I'm going to pick this up. Oops. Slide this under here. I just don't want to squeeze too much, so let me grab that again. Just 
go for attempt number two here. I don't know if I had too much coffee or not enough coffee, but hands are a little shaky. All right, let's slide that in. Okay, now the um, the way this goes is we have the sort of a masonite uh, washer, and uh, the one on the left here had a small brass washer. <clears throat> then the um, I believe it's a masonite washer, and the one on the right didn't have the smaller washer. I'm not sure why, if that was by design or if, um, I don't know, probably somebody played with it at one point and the uh, washer went missing, but I don't think it's necessary, so I'm not gonna worry about that. And uh, let's try to slip that in place. I'm starting to wonder now. No, that would be right. No, that's wrong. Okay, yeah. Put the mic in the wrong direction. Let's see if we can flip this around. I'm pretty sure that's the wrong direction. If you think about it, it doesn't quite match the um, the form of the uh, what we're trying to insulate from. Top piece of metal in the um, chassis of the... Uh, Tuner. Right. Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. That would be the correct uh, orientation there. All right. Let's see if we can get this in here. Okay. And um, my small screwdriver. Okay, now obviously this isn't something that's a matter of tightening down and holding a position. This is actually used for tuning. So when we do the alignment, um, these will be adjusted. Okay, so we'll just leave that loosely for now. Let's move on to number two. There we go. And that, my friends, is the not-so-sweet sound of a short. Yeah, let me go and turn this down here. Um, so as I was testing the uh, tuning condenser to make certain that uh, it's working properly before we put it on the chassis, I did identify a problem with this. And <clears throat> on this section of the, um, the tuning, um, we have a short between the uh, between the two sets of veins. Okay, um, let me demonstrate that. Well, you heard it. You could you could hear the short as we're connecting. You know the ground here to the, uh, the terminal. So the the ground is connected to one one side of the. Uh, I think one's called a rotor and the other side is called a stator. Um, so the rotor and the stator sections are are making actual uh, physical contact between the metal plates. Um, and we're not supposed to have that. This is supposed to behave as a capacitor where capacitance is created um, between the, the metal plates as they're very, very close, but they don't actually make contact. And the insulator in this case is air. Okay. So, um, and there is one point at this um, stage where I can turn the tuning where you're going to hear the beeping stop. And that demonstrates the point at which um, the veins are no longer touching. Okay. And I've tested the side. The side is fine. Um, let me turn this back on and I'll demonstrate that for you, okay? Okay, we're in our 
our tone mode, okay? If I go to the other side here, okay, open. So we do not have a short, do not have a short. Come over here, we have a short. Okay, now this is very interesting. I'm going to go through and I'm going to tune the condenser. And you will see the exact point where those veins are no longer making physical contact. And it should be right around here, right there. Yeah, you can see as I go a little bit further. So everything, uh, basically this portion of the veins are basically bent, they're bent, they're bent out of shape. <laughs> um, I can get that way myself sometimes. So that this, these have to be straightened. We need to straighten these very delicately so that as, as the veins rotate, we um, keep an, an exact perfect um, equidistance between, the, um, between the, the, these plates and those plates. These should be centered directly between um, these sets of plates here. Okay, and if you can see that, let me get up close here. Maybe you can even see that. I noticed uh, that these plates, as you can see, just by using the naked eye, these are very straight and these got bent. How that happened, I don't know. Um, I've been very delicate with it as far as that. This is, in fact, as I've been working on it, it's been in the, turn that off, been in the mesh position, so it was unlikely to, to suffer any damage from handling. So, um, yeah, that could have been something that's been plaguing this radio uh, for a long, long time. Again, it goes back to the 30s. I don't know when the last time this one was used. Uh, this was an eBay purchase. I can't recall if they said it was working or not. Um, when I got it, I didn't even attempt to, um, to listen to it because uh, it had suffered some little bit of damage during transit. Um, could this have been caused during transit? Mm, I'm not certain. I don't think so. Um, not quite sure what happened. But at any rate, let me work at straightening those veins out and see if we can get this to, um, to work properly without shorting. Okay, I think I've got it. And what I've done is, <clears throat> as I uh, was listening for the tone, basically I kept uh, moving this down and you know slightly bending using the, the flathead screwdriver, um, just pushing and pushing against those the the veins. There were there was really primarily just one that was bent, and then a couple of others were slightly bent. And I'll show you here if I. Go too far with it, you can make contact, but you can hear. Looks like we're pretty good. Yeah, let's go all the way. Yeah, looking good, nice and even. And um, let's see. Let's push them out of the way. You know, you want to make sure they're really centered, even if you get to the point where you no longer have the short, you know, keep keep going, get it so that, that it's really centered because you hate to put the radio back together again and then find that there was some slight movement. I mean, in his metal, I, you know, I suppose that the uh, heat and cold could affect it possibly and or what have you. So, yeah, make sure they're really nice and centered. Okay. Good. Excellent. Um, I should, I want to show you too that... Um, some of these veins are actually intended to be bent, um, the outer ones. <clears throat> and, well, not necessarily intended to be bent, but if you did have troubles um, with getting your alignment done, uh, particularly if you're, you know, if you're, you know, your, um, your generator is saying, you know, you're on 1300, but your dial is, you know, say, you know, 1400, what have you. These outer plates have these um, ridges in them for a reason and they can be bent at different points of the frequency band in or out that you know even after doing your your alignment dialing in your um, these capacitors and you know all the other aspects of alignment last last ditch expert um, last, last ditch uh, effort <laughs> you can actually work at bending these in or out and you, you may find that, that helps uh, solve your problem um, I would recommend keeping them as straight as possible and again using that as a last ditch effort.